So we're going to put the last two parts of chapter 5 as well, which is 5H using short wavelengths and actually um, the dangers of EM radiation as well. We're going to put those two together. Um, so if we start with the uses of short wavelengths, we already looked at how we can use the long wavelengths. So they were radio, micro, um, infrared and visible light. We're now going to focus on the last three parts of the EM spectrum, which are shorter wavelength, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. And again, what are the uses of those? So, First of all, looking at UV, UV can be used to kill bacteria, it can be used to kill viruses, UV is used to disinfect water, for example, so all of these, we actually also use UV for detecting forged banknotes, so for example, if there was fake money, it uses a process called fluorescence as well, so the UV is absorbed uh, by the material and then it re-emits violet light so you can see it, alright, so you can't see ultraviolet, we don't have the capabilities of seeing ultraviolet, but if some, some objects absorb ultraviolet they re-emit violet light which we can see and people mistake that for being able to see ultraviolet but really you're just seeing violet light okay so killing bacteria killing viruses disinfecting water and detecting forged banknotes they're all the uses of UV x-rays very very common thing now in today's world using x-rays to scan the body so you'd use x-rays for looking at the bone structure the skeleton detecting broken bones and having a look at the internal structures of the body we also use them in airports for example to, uh, to have a look inside the bags as they go through um, so it's medical uses for x-rays in terms of imaging the body and also in they're popping up in dentistry as well now we're looking at x-rays of the teeth um, so for medical use more than anything and then gamma rays something that very few people will come into contact with obviously unless you have to go into the hospital uh, and have to use them or if you work in hospitals but the uses of gamma rays essentially they're used to detect cancer so don't forget that you can use gamma rays to detect cancer but they're also used to kill cancer as well so gamma rays do both they detect the cancer and then they can also kill the cancer all right, and they're also used in sterilizing medical equipment. So it's very important that once medical equipment has been used, if it's to be reused, we actually use gamma because they have the highest energy, highest frequency, highest energy of all EM waves. They can actually kill those microorganisms that may still be present on that medical equipment. So sterilizing medical equipment. So they're your uses of the short wavelengths. Now, if we think back to the EM spectrum, radio, micro, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet x-ray gamma the shortest wavelengths have the highest frequencies so ultraviolet x-ray gamma are the three highest frequencies we also know that these three types of EM wave have the highest energy now high energy in terms of EM radiation is very dangerous so the higher the energy of the waves which is the higher the frequency of the waves the higher the energy of the waves the more dangerous they become now we're going to look at why a little bit but essentially what are the dangers then that can be caused by all EM waves? We look at microwaves, radio waves not really dangerous, radio waves are everywhere, they don't really affect us, they don't interact with humans very much, so there's not many dangers for radio waves if any. Microwaves can cause internal heating, so microwaves don't burn you, but they cause the water in the internal cells of your body to heat up. So it's very dangerous if you're exposed to microwaves because the water in your body, which we're made of a lot of, can start to heat up and obviously if it gets too much, it can be really dangerous for you. Infrared is heat. If you burn yourself on a hot object, then that's the infrared radiation. So infrared can cause skin burns, which is obviously very dangerous. Uh, and if they're really severe burns, then obviously it can be, it can be very dangerous. Ultraviolet back to the top three shortest wavelengths highest energy EM waves these are the really really dangerous ones we've skipped visible light obviously visible light can cause damage to the eyes we know that so too much visible light can actually damage the eyes but ultraviolet ultraviolet is responsible for sunburn not burning the skin which is infrared but sunburn which can eventually lead to skin cancer so the dangers, the most dangerous thing of ultraviolet and the reason that obviously we don't want it coming through the atmosphere is because it can cause sunburn and then that can lead to skin cancer. It can also really damage the eyes and it can lead to th uh, something called cataracts which can happen in the eyes but more commonly and obviously more dangerously it, you can develop skin cancer if you're exposed to too much ultraviolet. The dangers of x-rays and gamma rays these are obviously the two highest frequency, highest energy EM waves, and those two can essentially lead to mutations. They're really dangerous, really ionizing, which will be a word we'll learn in chapter six. 
but they're very dangerous because they can cause mutations to the DNA and we know that mutations in DNA can lead to cancer. So the main issues with ultraviolet X-ray and gamma rays, those parts of the M spectrum, are that inevitably or eventually, and if you're unlucky, it doesn't happen every time, but it is so much more likely to happen if you're exposed to them. It can cause mutations which can lead to cancer. Ultraviolet, more specifically for skin cancer, but X-rays and gamma rays can cause all sorts of different types of cancer, but essentially the the main danger of those three types of EM wave is leading to cancer, which obviously we know is very dangerous. All right, if we just have a quick look at why, why these EM waves are so dangerous with the higher the energy they get. Now, when EM waves interact with your cells, your cells are made of atoms. Now we know or should know at this stage that atoms are made of a nucleus of positive and neutral charges and then an outside shell of electrons which have orbiting negative particles. So your electrons are around the outside negative, nucleus in the middle which is positive, it's neutral, so they're balanced. But EM waves with high energy have enough energy that they can release those electrons from the atoms. It's called ionization. They can break away electrons from the atom. Now, if an electron is lost, this atom is no longer neutral. You have positively charged atoms with negative electrons that have been broken away. So you have positive charged cells. Now, if those positive charges start to interact and chemically react, then it's the chemical reactions that take place that can lead to those mutations and therefore lead to the cancer. So the danger with the higher energy, the higher energy, the more likely they are to release the electrons and ionize the atoms. The lower energy, they don't have enough energy to actually ionize these atoms. So the reason high energy is so dangerous is because the electrons in these orbiting shells can be freed, can be ionized, can be broken away by that high energy electromagnetic radiation and that's what causes all these dangers in the higher energy end of the spectrum. Okay.